Servants Heart. Servants Heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take. Servants Heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life. We're going to speak on business. You're gonna shine bright. We are going to witness business with our servants' hearts. Servants heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray. Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with the Servants Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Ramon, and I'm so thrilled to have you join us today. We're dedicated here on this podcast to explore the idea of doing business and living life with a purpose, serving others, and yes, achieving success. We believe we approach our work and our lives with a servant's heart, always bringing value, giving, and receiving as well. We can truly make a difference. We created a show for you because we want everybody to be mo- everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated, to make an impact in your world. Well, while you listen to my guest today, who's going to talk about speaking and the power of it, and I've been doing it, and I know the power, so I know what he's saying is so awesome. I want you to think about how you're going to serve today and what impact you'll create today. And today's uh, episode is proudly sponsored by our phenomenal partner, Pantheon Alliance. Imagine being part of an exclusive community of high-income, successful business owners and entrepreneurs from very diverse industries, growing a thought leader, expert platform, but more importantly, to make an impact to change in the world. If you want more information on Pantheon Alliance, reach out and I'll get you information on the Pantheon Alliance. With that being said, I want to welcome, said, I want to welcome my incredible guest, Sean, welcome to the show. Hey man, thanks for having me. How's your day, how's your day going? Fantastic. TEDx talks, speaking. Why should we do them? Uh, because that's how we're going to get the message out and radical change and powerful emotional thoughts communicated. And the TEDx platform in itself is very, very prestigious. And not everybody, there's a million motivational speakers, but there's only about 40 to 50,000 available TEDx talks. It's exclusive for a reason. And the three that I've done have all been on resilience and uh, veteran suicides because of my 20 years in the military. You have to get out and speak or you could play a backseat role or behind the scenes role or whatever working with someone to get their message out if you know some people don't want to be in the limelight so you have to be a speaker if you if you want to plant your flag and have a position and be a thought leader but if you don't want to be a thought leader that's okay you can be a podcast host or you can just work with somebody who has a powerful message but i think everyone should be in that line of work how easy to get it to next talk it's very hard it's very hard People spend years trying to get approved for a TEDx talk. So it's worth the time. I know it's months and it's, you know, a lot of interviews and there's a work to it. And to to you, it's worth it. And why is it worth it? Well, you said why it's worth it already. What's the first step if somebody wants to do a TEDx talk? Yeah. If you wanted to get a TEDx talk, you absolutely have to create the messaging and what's the big idea that you're trying to communicate and what would happen if, all of humanity adopted that idea. You can't just say, oh, we would solve world hunger or everybody would live the most amazing life. That's different for everybody. My most amazing life happens every day. But someone who's living at the bottom of the barrel or someone who's living under a freeway overpass is not living their best life. So what does that look like? Is it because I don't make $10 million a year? I'm not living my best life. I know people who make 50,000 a year that are living their best life. So you, you can't say that. It has to be very specific. And once you figure out what your message is, once you figure out what the big idea worth spreading is, then everything else will fall into place because every TEDx talk or event has a theme for that event. And if your talk doesn't match their theme, they're never going to choose you. I had somebody when I was working with, 
they, she says, I applied 32 times. I'm like, well, well, then it's you. It's clearly not TEDx. It's clearly you. And looking at her stuff, it was, it was not a mess, but it needed a lot of work. Her messaging was all over the place. It wasn't congruent, wasn't concise. And it had nothing to do with the events that she was even applying for. She just saw a TEDx event and just applied. Oh, this is what I want to talk about. You have to mold the talk to fit the theme because that is what they care about the most. So we did. We didn't rewrite it, but we moved things around, made it more uh, seamless, made it flow better, sound better, changed a couple of words. But it was it was more together. And then we looked at a couple of events and I said, I think you'd be perfect for this one. She said, yeah, I think so. And within a couple of events, she was approved and booked. That's a fantastic story. It turned out well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Her, her talk has been viewed thousands of times. Nice. So what inspired you to talk about resilience? A lot of things we can talk about. And I love that you are talking about it, but what inspired you? Well, I wasn't very resilient when I first joined the military in 01. And then I went through a bad deployment, started battling alcohol abuse, not alcoholism, but just, you know, just abusing alcohol. And I didn't have a good relationship with myself and, and relationships were deteriorating around me. I was running a, a multi six figure business events, planning business. And I just, I don't know. It was just kind of a, a, a low moment, right? You get, sometimes we get down, like, oh, I just didn't have a very good day. Like, nothing really cool happened. That was, like, my life. My life was like that. Every aspect of my life was at a low level. And it just kind of consumed me. So I decided that uh, that would be the day that uh, I just say to hell with everything. And I was just drinking all the time. And so the wife and the kids left. And then I'd show up to work drunk. And the military was kicking me out. And uh, decided that I'm just going to end it. Like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I'm over it. You win. So that was uh, that was my suicide attempt. And uh, the people that I worked with, the people I was serving with, like, found me, you know, kind of stopped me as I put the gun in my mouth. And, uh, you know, I went through therapy, much needed therapy. And I kind of grew from that. And... As I grew from that, they told me that I should go be a drill instructor because I have a powerful story, either from my childhood or you know teenage years, whatever, and from being in the military. So I became a drill instructor where I learned how to speak and train. And then that grew into, hey, there's an there's a opening for a resilience trainer. Maybe I should do that. Oh, now I'm becoming a suicide awareness trainer. I should do that. And then I led that program for four years up until I retired from the military. That's uh, well, thank you for your service. First of all, I don't want to forget that. Thank you. What's one message you'd leave somebody listening that is either has a friend or a family contemplating dying by suicide or is thinking about it? You never know what you will say or what you will do that will change someone's life, either for the good or for the bad. We have the power with our words to build people up or to tear them down. And I don't care how resilient you think you are. When someone hits a nerve or someone says something, it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. And then you start wondering, like, are, were they right? Like, do I have a blind spot? Maybe, maybe I am who they say I am. And then you start kind of questioning your beliefs and you start questioning yourself. And then you start asking other people like, well, somebody said this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they're having a bad day. And maybe, you know, it's like they say, like, there's a little truth in every joke. People are like, oh, I'm just kidding. Like, look, but are you? But but are you though? If someone makes fun of you because you're short or whatever, and they give a bunch of short jokes, like there's a little bit of truth in there, right? So I don't care how resilient you are, you know, people are gonna say things, it's gonna throw you th for a loop, and you know, it's just you have to be strong in the beliefs of yourself. So um that that's pretty much what I teach people, and that was kind of the basis of my TEDx talks was. Like you have an identity and you have the power to be resilient. So anybody who's facing someone who's contemplating suicide or someone who has gone through that or, or facing a hard time, you never know what you might say or what you might do that will change someone else's life. Whether you want to or not, your suicide or your 
not giving up or your actions or whatever will change someone's life. It's inevitable. Talk about success core. Interesting to me. What's what's that all about? Yeah. <laughs> so I built that in 2016 as a wow. brand to kind of mimic the military a little bit, but create groups and mastermind. So I, I had a mastermind, you know, up until the pandemic and it was great. We had a, you know, quite a few people in there, but I don't think it went into really what I wanted it to be. But the success core is basically, you know, my speaker business, but there's a side of it that is a, is a kind of a group coaching mastermind um, booking agency for speakers and podcasts. So I get people booked on podcasts and stages and then get them booked for their TEDx. And my, I guess you call it agency. Uh, we work with people to build their speaker businesses, launch their podcasts, launch their books. And we've done that since 2017. Nice. What's the first thing you tell somebody listening going, this is exciting. I want to be a speaker. Where's my first step? Your first step is to solve a problem. It's the same thing as business. It's the same thing as the podcast. It's any, how you do anything is how you do everything. And everything starts with what is the problem I solve? You have to solve a problem. Otherwise you're just like everybody else. So pick out your problem of the market exacerbate that problem, market that problem, tell everybody the world is going to explode if you don't solve that problem. And then people pay for your solution to solve that problem. Your whole job as a business owner is not only to deliver world-class experiences and services, but it, your whole job as a marketer, as a business owner, as a speaker, is to tell the world how much it will explode if you do not solve the problem that you currently are solving. It's simple, simple, but our head gets in the way. Good old <laughs> noggin is not good for us. Monetize, monetize, monetizing podcasts to support your business. How do you guys do that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I help people build guides, sell their books, sell their programs, products, services. But when you're on a podcast or you have a podcast, there's a certain way to do it. And it's all about educating the market and giving value first. If anybody can go on and say, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, look at me, look at me, buy my stuff. But if they don't know what the problem you solve is, or they don't think that it's valuable enough, or they don't think that what you're selling is worth what they are worth. For example, people won't pay more than what they think they are worth. So if somebody has a $5,000 coaching program, but they don't think they're worth $5,000, they're never going to pay for it. I don't care how much you sell them. You have to have them believe in themselves that they're worth the five thousand. Oh, your your program's five thousand. Man, I don't know. Like, that sounds like a lot. I'm not sure I'm worth that. Is usually what people are thinking. So it comes out to how bad do they want it? I wanted TEDx so bad. I knew I was worth it. I wanted it so bad. I read every book. I consumed every, every webinar, every masterclass, every content. I paid for coaches. I mean, I did everything I could. And now I got three talks. And I've emceed a talk. And I've applied for my TEDx license to host my own event. This is my wow. world. Because I've consumed everything in this world. It's like podcasting. There's guys like Dave Jackson and Joe Polish and you and me and Simona and a ton of other people. There's a ton of people who have consumed everything in this podcast space who are now using the podcast space to put out content, to build their business, to get their message out, to amplify their voice. Why? Why? Because they've consumed every single part of this because this is their world. And so are they worth the program? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's you got to take action. You got to be consistent and you got to keep learning and learning and learning. Great question for you because you contemplated suicide. How do you reduce stress and anxiety in your life? Oh man, it's all about resilience. So I define resilience as your ability to withstand, recover, and grow through stress, anxiety, and life-changing demands. And your question to your point is, how do we do this? Number one is gratitude. 
Gratitude has been scientifically linked to lowering your anxiety, stress, and depression. Count three blessings a day, say thank you, compliment people, always radiate a positive attitude. You never know what someone is carrying around with them, and you never know what you might say or what you might do that will change your life. I was going through the airport, and this lady is decked out. This black lady had this blue hat with this blue top. and pa- I mean, it was a whole match. She said, gold bracelet. I'm, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably like a Walmart cheap fake thing or whatever. She had gold neck. I mean, it's just everything. There was, I think her belt was like gold trip. I mean, she was decked. I was like, wow. Does it matter if the jewelry was real or not? Does it matter if her Walmart was $5 at a thrift store? It looked fantastic. She was decked out. And so I'm walking by her was like, wow. I was like, you are dressed to the nines, girl. You look really good. You look very beautiful. And I kind of, she's like, hey, oh my gosh. She's I didn't even know. Am I dressed too nice? I was like, so where are you going? She goes, I'm going to a conference. I'm like, me too. I'm going to speak. And we just got to talk a little bit. She's just going to attend a conference, you know, headed out the airport. She's like, this absolutely made my day. I'm like, you're welcome. You look fantastic. Then I kept on walking. You know, and I felt good. She felt good. It's like, that's what it's all about. It's leading with kindness is is the second way that you become more resilient. You live a better life. It's kindness. And the third is connection. And that's the reason why you speak. And that's the reason why you do a podcast. And that's the reason why you're in business. Or that's the reason why you do anything is the connection. We're humans. We crave connection. We are, we are pack animals. We are herd animals. Just like horses, just like dogs, just like wolves. We all have a pecking order. There's the middle class, lower class, upper class, elites, whatever you want to call them. We're all pack animals. And so we have a we have a need and a long to belong. And so connection is the key. And if you're like Steve, a super connector, if you are delivering value every single time you type a message or you open your mouth or you put out content. If you're delivering a valuable message that people are moved by, how can you live a horrible life? Your brother from another mother. It's when I speak, that's exactly what I talk about. Networking properly because we're in a people asset business, bring value. The key word there, a lot that you said is powerful is value. So I learned something about you when I first met you. I did not know, but you have a clothing line called Lib, L-Y-B. What is that? Yeah, so so (laughs) it's just something I created in the pandemic. So L-Y-B stands for Live Your Brand. And we're actually rebranding right now. But L-Y-B Clothing Inc. is an affirmation and empowerment clothing line. And we've got shirts that say... I don't make excuses. I make results. Um, We've got like a truth side of it that says the truth always wins. Um, Goals are just dreams with a deadline. So it's all these like little quotes and, and little things that I want that, that I'll say during a talk that people are like, yeah, might that be a cool shirt? And so I just made like a clothing line out of the taglines and, and lines that I say during a talk or that I say on a podcast and I put them on a shirt and people bought them. I'm like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I haven't really like ramped it up, but um, the site's still active, but we took down a lot of the stuff, but uh, the, the, the messaging's there, but we're rebranding and then we're going to relaunch in the fall or later in a couple of months. But um, yeah. We'll get the information. We'll have them connect with you or your team. Yeah. To interesting. And get the clothing when it comes back and launches. Yeah. And you know, the thing about clothing like that, your message is out there forever. Every time they wear your t-shirt, your hat, yep. that message. And it's not your ego because you don't have one. It's if somebody reads that message and it changes their life indirectly, it's credited to you. And that's the right. power of it. And and because you're getting uh, such people resonate with your message. It's fantastic. Yeah. You and I was on. thinking about, and I was thinking about like, when I go clothes shopping, like people, people sometimes like they don't like graphic tees, you know, like, Oh, what's with this graphic tee? I don't know. T-shirts are fine. Like you're just hanging out or you're going to a conference. You want to wear a t-shirt underneath your suit coat or something like that, you know, or you're just, you know, kind of lounging at the house, you know, you're on vacation or something, you know, you want to wear a shirt. I was wanting to 
put positive messages out there and you know, you go t-shirt shop, you don't really see them. You know, there's band t-shirts or there's like Ford Mustangs or Chevy or, you know, there's always like different graphic tees and stuff. I was like, I just, I want powerful messages on a shirt. That's, that's really all I want. And so I started, I was like, I'm just going to create my own thing. And then I put up messages that I wanted to wear and then it kind of, kind of stuck. So that's powerful. Very powerful people. It's so subtle, but it's powerful. Cause like I said, somebody sees a hat or a shirt or a sweatshirt and that message resonates with them. We're coming mm -hmm. to the end here. You work with a lot of entrepreneurs. What's one tip you want to leave them before we end the show? Well, I mean, we can go a couple different ways. If you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, whether you're successful or not, we all have something unique that we bring to the market. And the uniqueness is us. We, we are the mm -hmm. differentiating factor. So there's a lot of fluff online. It's like, you got to have a differentiating factor. They got to figure out what that is. You, it's, it's you. Like, you are the different. The way you talk, the way you move, the way you speak, the way you look, your mannerisms. Nobody can be Steve or Sean or Gary B or Tony Robbins or, the, you know, the, there's no imitation. You are who you are. And so just become the best version of yourself and whatever that looks like. It's it kind of comes in like, how do I want the world to see me? But it more stems from what's the problem that I can solve? What are my skill sets? And it's like, oh, well, I could do anything. No, it's like when I work with speakers, they're like, oh, just put me on speaker. I speak on anything. No, no, you can't. If you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. So you got to niche down. You got to know exactly what you're talking about. You got to know exactly the problem you solve and who you're solving it for. And then who the gatekeepers are. And once you can figure out all those little missing pieces, then you're successful and you will be successful. But people buy into you. It's called a law buy-in. People buy into the vision first and to the person second. They have to resonate with your vision and they have to know that you are who you are. And they have to know that you are as authentic as you think you are. And so the law of buy-in is just, I'm going to buy into the vision of whatever they want to create. And then I'll get a hold of the person. Yeah. Powerful message. Uh, authenticity. I learned you actually helped me when the first time I met you, keeping that in my mindset when I meet people, not everybody's going to like me or you, you're right. And it doesn't matter. A lot of people out there, we can help. If they're not resonating with us next, it's my phrase. I tell everybody next is, and not in a bad way, you still love them, but it's not a fit. You move on to your next thing. I love it. Let's end with a fun question. Yep. Okay, Sean, you reserved a tabletop of four at a restaurant. You're sitting in one of the seats. In the three other seats that are empty, dead or alive, who would you invite? Why? And what food would you order? Oh, man. Um, so can I give you two answers? Give me, it's your question. You can do what you want with it. Okay. So my instinct was immediately my two, my two girls, they're 10 and six. And then my partner, that, that would be the four, that that's the four of us eating dinner because of the most important people in my world. Yep. The answer to that question would be like, Oh my gosh, like Thomas Edison or George Washington or like, you know what I mean? Like everybody's going to pick, pick like powerful people. Or, or like, oh my gosh, if I could sit next to Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk and, I don't know, Frank Kern or, you know, Abraham or, you know, what, you know, any powerful person, Steve Jobs or what, like, that's usually people's go-to. So, of course, like, I'd love to sit down with Jesus for five minutes. Like, I, I wonder what the rest of my life is going to, like, what the heck, man? I got some questions like, how come I didn't get that thing I asked for like 10 years ago, like Santa Claus, you know what I mean? Like what the hell happened? What was all that about? Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, but other, other than like, you know, the, the same famous people that are entrepreneurs are like sitting down to talk with like Jesus or God or somebody, man. Um, if I'm going to reserve a table for four, it's going to be, you know, my partner and, and, and my two daughters. Beautiful family, family. So what yeah. food would you order? Would they order or would you? I would let them order whatever they want. I'm going to order okay. Italian hopefully to be an Italian restaurant or like steak or something like that. But, uh, but yeah. Very cool. I love it. Love family, man. Can never go wrong. It's a great right. answer. 
and they're all great answers, but it, it just really shows who you are, <laughs> which I knew you were a family man. It's important to you. Yeah. Um, how can people support you, Sean, connect with you, reach out to you? Yeah. If you need a speaker who speaks on resilience, leadership, team building, team performance, or business positioning strategies for podcasts or speakers and authors, I'd love to speak at your event. I'd love to be a guest on your podcast. If uh, you want to become a TEDx speaker or you want to become a paid keynote speaker, get a hold of me and I have a program for that. We'll work with you for however long it takes. Usually it's 90 day increments and uh, you're off to the races. Beautiful. Thank you, Sean. This was fantastic. Learn a lot about TEDx talks that I didn't know. And that's why I love being a host. You get to learn. Right? It's such a powerful tool amongst all the Perfect. great things that you said. And, and also don't forget my TV show together. We serve every Friday, 2 PM Pacific, 5 PM Eastern. It's on Roku, Apple TV, Samsung, all those streaming services. See my big old head on your 70 inch screen and enjoy my guests, not my big old head. And do me a favor, subscribe to the podcast, uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, subscribe or, or um, a review on our Apple podcast uh, as well, because what it does is it gets Sean more visibility to be able to help other people. It's not about selling here. It's about bringing value and helping people. So do me a favor and then comment on a YouTube channel or on Apple uh, podcast. And I'll get those to Sean to for Sean, or I'll take the feedback. I want to grow this because doing business with servant's heart is a message I want to get out to the world. And I'll need your help doing that. And me and Sean, thank you so much for watching or listening to our podcast, Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.